guys, it's Jessie V. So today we're gonna be continuing, I'm talking way too fast. So today we're going to be continuing our series called It's Near You and we're gonna be discussing all of the haunted places in Arizona. I feel like doing this series makes me so jealous of all of these locations because I'm not near them and I really wanna be near them because I wanna explore all of these places, but you know, <laughs> maybe someday I guess. But before I get into this video, I have yet another surprise for you guys. I have not only one new necklace in my merch. I have two and I'm wearing the other one right now and it's so cute because it's a tiny little planet with a star on the bottom. Oh my gosh, I have to show you this up close. So this is what it looks like. Isn't that the cutest thing? I've never seen like a necklace with a ring all the way around for a planet. That is just so cool to me and there's a Jesse V charm on this one too. I'm actually going to spin it around so you can see the charm on the clasp but there's like a little alien and it says Jesse V on the back so that's where you clasp it and and yeah, I just think it's so cute. So if you're not into unicorns, but you are into aliens and planets in space, then this necklace is for you. But I don't know how you couldn't be into unicorns because unicorns are the best things ever. I honestly like both equally. <laughs> but yeah, this necklace is available down below in my description. This also is limited edition because we only have a certain amount of stocks. So keep that in mind. And yeah, I think this is so cool because I'm wearing it with my like space jacket. Remember when I got this online? Let me turn around so you can see properly. I love this. I just thought it was like a really Really good and look I have my moon I'm so spacey right now <laughs> anyways so guys we gotta get serious because we're gonna be talking about some very serious haunted locations right now right up in here sorry I'm like really excited right now because this weekend I'm going to a cottage and it seems like every time I go for a cottage weekend with my friends the place is always haunted because we always pick these really old cottages so I'm gonna vlog while I'm there and like we'll see if it's haunted we'll find out because last time we went we played hide and seek with ghosts and that's not even like a joke if you guys remember that story time that was so scary. Anyways though, let's get into the haunted locations in Arizona. The first place we're going to talk about is the Colossal Cave and this was the location that kept popping up in my entire research looking up Arizona. This place is so haunted that there are a million articles about it. With more than 1,000 years of life surrounding the cave and another 100 years of tourism alone, it makes sense that many people have experienced haunted encounters. Many people in earlier decades have said to have died on the park grounds. And what's really sad is that specifically there were two little boys that passed away in the cave. So their spirits are said to be lingering there along with hundreds of other peoples that unfortunately didn't make it when they were in the cave. Experts also believe that limestone helps signal paranormal activity. And that is so interesting to me because the colossal cave is literally made out of limestone. And I did not know that limestone like conducts paranormal activity or attracts paranormal activity. I didn't know that like stone or rock could do that, so that's really interesting to me. Longtime Colossal Cave employees have all smelled the scent of tobacco at some point, when no one in the vicinity had been smoking. And if you look at tourists who have gone there, a lot of their pictures they've taken have so many orbs all through the footage. And obviously, as you guys know, orbs could be a sign of roaming spirits. Sometimes it's dust, but sometimes it could actually be a spirit. Another employee described a time in which she saw a man in an off-limits area, and when she instructed him to get out, out of the forbidden place, he didn't listen to her. But with a blink of an eye, he disappeared. That freaks me out so much. Imagine working there and seeing a man in an area that's off limits because it's dangerous and you're like, hey buddy, like get out of that area and he like turns and like disappears. No, 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 no. And what sucks is I feel like no one would believe me if that happened to me. Another employee was giving a cave tour to a family. After one of the young girls took a photo of a passageway inside the cave, she looked back at the photo and she said she saw a face in the picture. When taking another picture, picture of the same spot, the face wasn't there, and the first photograph had disappeared entirely. And what's weird is that where this little girl took the photo is apparently where the two boys passed away. So the fact that she saw a face in her photo exactly where the boys died, apparently that is just mind-blowing. And the fact that the photo disappeared on its own. I've heard of that happening so many times where people go to like haunted locations and take a video clip, and when they come back and try and upload their footage, it's not there anymore. Thankfully, that has not happened to me because I've been to so many haunted houses and that's never like happened to my footage, but fingers crossed, knock on wood, it doesn't happen to me. What's really cool is that the cave has ghost tours once a month. I don't know why they only do it once a month, but if I'm ever there, I am going on that cave tour, even though I'm afraid of caves because I'm like slightly claustrophobic, <laughs> but anyways. The next place we're gonna talk about is the Lost Dutchman 
State Park. Now, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I hear Dutchman, I always think about SpongeBob. <laughs> like, you know, the flying Dutchman in SpongeBob, like the little, 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 little. Sorry, we'll continue. Though a scenic state park, the Lost Dutchman is a historic and very spooky place. There's a myth that the Lost Dutchman's mine is hidden in the mountains, which is also supposedly haunted and guarded by spirits. Dozens of people have lost their lives searching for the Lost Dutchman mine because of the gold that is said to be there. And people have dug so many holes at the foot of these mountains trying to find the gold and trying to find the mine that if you go there and you're hiking there, you can see all of the holes that people have dug. And that could also be why people frequently disappear there when they're on the hike. Maybe they've fallen into these holes. Visitors say that while they're in the mountains, they have seen a mysterious light in the distance. I have read so many reviews on this park and so many people say that while they're up hiking in the mountains, they always see this strange light. And whenever I hear of strange lights, I always think about aliens, but that's just, that's just my opinion. The next place we're gonna talk about is the Thornton Road Domes. And the minute I saw a picture of these things, I was so creeped out. They look really weird and like ominous. There's a very eerie aura coming from the unusual looking UFO shaped concrete structures located on a five acre patch of desert terrain. They were once an electronics manufacturing plant built by Intercon Technology in 1982, but the factory was left unfinished on the side of Thornton Road in Casa Grande where the company went bankrupt. So now they just sit there in the middle of this desert completely abandoned, completely unused, and people are saying that there is a lot of paranormal activity that happens there. And not only are these domes surrounded by paranormal encounters, but they also house rebellious teenage parties because teenagers see that these are abandoned and empty and they're like, hey, let's throw parties there. So if you ever go and like look inside, there's like bottles everywhere, there's garbage everywhere because of all the parties that take place in there. People swear they see shadowy figures, hear whispering noises, sounds of children screaming and footsteps. Other online theories suggest that some members of a coven practice rituals in the domes because people have found like remains of animals and different household objects in these domes and like remnants of like fires and like people just think that rituals happen there which is kind of disturbing. But I read somewhere that this guy attended a party in one of these domes and all of the people started seeing these shadowy figures everywhere and it sounded... I would not want to go there really. The next place we're going to talk about is the Birdcage Theater. I kind of like the name of that. It sounds kind of cool. This theater used to be known as the wildest, wickedest night spot between Bazin Street and the Barbary Coast. It was a really popular place in the 1800s, so it's a pretty old theater now. But it's located in a place called Tombstone. Isn't that so bizarre? I've never heard of like a town called Tombstone until now. What? It's said the theater is home to 26 ghosts. Music and voices have been heard in the middle of the night as if a big party is being thrown. Guests and staff have reported seeing ghosts of cowboys who never left the property and others have claimed to have been touched or pushed by unseen forces. And this theater offers nightly ghost tours there for brave people who want to experience this activity themselves. So this theater knows that it's haunted so they always offer tours there which is kind of cool. The next place we're going to talk about is Horseshoe Cafe in Benson. The Horseshoe Cafe Cafe is located right across the street from the town's train station. The cafe opened in 1938 and has been a landmark to locals and drifters alike, with its horse head shaped neon sign and large mural on the side of the two story building that depicts three cowboys riding on horses. It is said that at some point in the cafe's history, there was an old woman living upstairs, like above the cafe, and she unfortunately passed away. So she is said to have been ghosting up the place ever since. I have never heard of ghosting up the place until I read this article. People have described seeing the woman looking out of the windows of the second story or walking around near the staircase and even showing up in the back of the restaurant. There's also a ghost dog that people see that apparently was the dog of the woman who passed away. People usually hear the dog barking from the second floor when there's not actually a dog there, so that's kind of interesting. The next place we're gonna talk about is the Orpheum Theater. Constructed in the 1920s, the Orpheum Theater is no stranger to paranormal activity. The original 
original owner, Harry Nace, passed away very mysteriously. And then there's also a ghost named Maddie who reportedly whacks guests on the head and has even been caught photobombing snaps. Okay, this ghost whacks guests on the head? What? That is so rude. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's like not funny, but it is funny. Guests have also spoken of unexplainable purring set to come from the theater's resident cat. While the latter doesn't sound so scary, being whacked on the head by a disgruntled urethral being is very disturbing. Yeah, like after hearing about that, the purring cat does not sound scary at all because Maddie sounds terrifying. Ghost chasers can experience the paranormal activity firsthand as the Orpheum Theater offers ghost tours throughout October for those bold enough to venture into the dark corners and normally off-limit spots said to be haunted by spirits. I love how most of these places have ghost tours, like that is the best thing ever. And the last place we're going to talk about is the Casey Moore's Oyster House. I have never heard of a haunted oyster house until now, that's kind of interesting. Built over a hundred 106 years ago, it f Okay, I'm not even kidding. I heard the loudest growl beside me. Oh my gosh, what the heck? I wonder if that caught that on camera. <gasps> I just had this like jolt of like shock. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Built over 106 years ago, it first served as a private residence and also a boarding house. Nearby neighbors have witnessed a dapperly dressed couple dancing throughout the upstairs bedrooms in the middle of the night. It's speculated that the duo may be specters of the original owners of the home, named Mary and William Moore. Other regular sightings include the ghost of an Arizona State University student who used to live in the boarding house. Apparently, the young woman with black Black hair and light eyes suffered from an untimely death at the hands of her boyfriend. That is so sad. So a lot of stuff goes down there. I am so interested in going to like a haunted restaurant to see what happens. And there are so many haunted restaurants near me, like near my house that I could actually go to. I really want to get back into ghost hunting videos. I really miss those. And there are so many places near me, so I should go. Anyways, though, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As I always say, if I miss any really haunted locations, definitely comment them down below because I I can't cover every single thing, but let me know if you are enjoying this series and your state might be next. You never know. But yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Don't forget that these necklaces are available down below in my description and yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye!